go. Okay, there we are. Hello, everybody. Good to see you after a week's hiatus due to massive illness. But uh, I, I'm on the, I'm on the mend, and uh, to prove it, I'm here with a lot of people. I don't know how many people we're going to have today because it's Memorial Day, and uh, that uh, that brings into question. Uh, whether people are going to go out and spend it with their families or spend it with a doddering old man. Okay, let's start admitting a lot of the people here that are doing the show today. Uh, first of all, there's Marjorie Miller, who just so happens to be my better half. Uh, Andrew Deutsch, who uh, is joining us today. It's nice to see you, Andrew, as well as the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace. And Paula Levin, geez, Paula, good to see you. Were you sick, Paula? I heard or something. No, I'm I'm sitting at a weird angle because I have a, my my leg is up because I had a knee replacement. Oh, that was what I heard. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, they had a knee yeah. replacement. Okay, so how's I'm, the, I'm like how's... At, a, at a. I just I'm fine, but I I just have to sit like this. Yeah, I never had any parts replaced, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, what did you What did you replace it with? An no elbow? comment from this end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, uh, um, uh, thank you very much, Edward Berger, for joining us. That's right. That's right. That's and, right. And Len Lafrisco, uh, and it's a nice little bunch here. Maybe we'll have some more join us as the hour goes on. Uh, Cheers, you know, everybody. It's a holiday. Cheers to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you had your knee replaced. That's good. Well, as I say, I've never had any I've never had any problems that way where I've had to like, have a hip or a knee or an elbow or anything like that replaced. Me neither. It's but it's working out fine so far. Um, I, I, it was done on the eleventh, and I graduated to a, a cane from a, a walker. Yeah. And um, um I, i'm i'm optimistic the only the only downside is that i can't come and see you this summer oh really why is that because <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. really you can't you I mean, come yeah. and see us when you're ready yeah i uh i'm ready now but you know <laughs> the messages are getting through to my body yeah so this is the show ladies and gentlemen in case you've never joined us before this is a show where people talk about replacing hips and, uh, <laughs> new knees and it's, uh, called, it's called the organ recital right? yeah <laughs> i know it's what I've, used, I've, I've told people that joke many times lately yeah so have i it's not so funny <laughs> oh, no, it used to be removed, but nothing replaced that was having bandwidth issues did oh, you say you got an organ replacement is that what i heard <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> just my knee. <laughs> oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> that's our gangster friend uh, there, uh, Charlie Notos. Uh, uh, or Charlie, how many six? I got four toes. Four toes. Hey, Charlie, don't four cut toes. Me short. <laughs> yeah. What happens if you lose the other four? You can't. You can't stand up or what? Do you have shoes? Balance. All it's over. All balance. Balance. That's all. You have shoes with like things in them in step. No, I just stuff socks. And the tip so that my foot won't slide around in the shoe. Yeah. By the way, this is uh, Mandy, who has different lighting today because she's at home. Yeah. 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 It, it, do you use a different computer, too? Do you use like an iPad? Yeah, I'm actually on my computer instead of my phone. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I use my phone at work because I want to keep working and I don't want to take up one of my monitors with a Zoom. Yeah. So. You know nice, what I have? Nice, is, nice kitchen, Mandy. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's a beautiful house. You've seen pictures. Yeah. 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 Making, making sausage balls again. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Mar what I took off of Marjorie's oh, yeah. camera was she had that thing they have on Apple called center stage, which if she moves off camera, it moves with her. It follows her face. Follows her face, yeah. Oh, or, wow. move, move a little bit, Marjorie. Let's see if I got rid of it. No, we fixed it. Well, no, we didn't. Fix oh, no, we didn't. It's still moving, yeah. Oh, God. You have to fix it till Wednesday, Alex. Yeah, because she has a... a, a um, she's taking... Um, what can I call it? Uh, exercise for altacacas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my knee surgeon, the one that did my knee repair. See, see what we're talking about? See? <laughs> got together with a very good trainer to work with older women and men mm -hmm. who have had, rather than have all these surgeries, build up the muscle mass around those knee, those areas. Mm -hmm. So 
I've been working with him. So I wouldn't but, qualify to join you on these things. But the thing moves and it gets him dizzy. <laughs> oh, I see. With the iPad. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. I, I thought I took it off. It's a thing called center stage. Well, see, it's moving. Oh, it's still moving. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great idea, believe I it I do not. too, but it gets him dizzy. So that is a little bit weird. I mean, it's yeah. a little, I could see that getting somebody kind of dizzy looking at that. Yeah. Uh, do you have a, what kind of, do you just have a Windows computer there, uh, Mandy? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's just a, because this, this is a thing that Mac, that Apple has now, this, this center stage thing. They put it on all their portable computers. Well, you didn't turn it off, Alex. Well, I thought I did. Please excuse me. I've been sick. Maybe you have to turn it off every time you, you, you use it. Yeah, maybe so. So, how, how did you get COVID, Alex? I don't get it. You don't go anywhere. Well, I'm, just, don't I'm, 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 I'm very talented. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Huh. Just no idea. It makes no sense to me at all. What is all that? Oh, <laughs> there's COVID. Get it away from me. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but the thing is that I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Marjorie and I have said, you know, she thinks I got it at a restaurant, but I don't think so. Well, but wait, but I did, I wasn't going out that much anyway. There was no reason. It doesn't matter. It. it all depends if somebody sneezes or breathes near you yeah. or yeah. coughs. You, sh you sure well, it wasn't at that I, Oath Keepers yeah. meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have worn a mask. Uh, It'd be a hood. Yeah, a hood. Less, less chance of going to prison. No, the thing is that uh, we tried to figure it out and there's no way of figuring it out. But I, the only thing I can say is that I think that probably COVID now is a lot less virile than it was, say, two years ago. Like, you know, we remember it then. Mm -hmm. It's getting worse again, but it's not as virile because Marjorie did not get COVID. I mean, I definitely had COVID. I had all the symptoms, everything. It was very fortunate that we had visitors here for the weekend one of whom happened to be a doctor. <laughs> and so I said, uh, I was in charge. I went to sleep, fell asleep on like uh, uh, Friday. And I felt terrible that night. I mean, it was just all these weird, it was just weird. Okay. Me trying to sleep. And then I, uh, uh, I woke up the next morning. And I was feeling like crap. So I said, I'm, I'm going to take a COVID test just for the hell of it. Because hell knows we have how many of them in this house? About 300. <laughs> you know? So I took one and boom, I got COVID. So now I tell Rachel, the doctor, our friend, I'm, I think it came out positive for COVID. And the first thing she did was hand me a mask. <laughs> you know? And she said, okay, well, then we got to call your uh, pharmacy. Where is it? And I, it's, it was Saturday. And I thought they were closed, but they go till 1.30. 1.30. And uh, she ordered it up. She And I didn't know if she could do it. She's a California doctor, but she gave him her license number and stuff. And she was able to get it for me and got Paxlovid. And um, the great thing about Paxlovid is, I mean, I still have this for a couple of days, but it works. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just knocks it flat. And you know, you're talking about the doctor. I was at the doctor's office last Tuesday, and I was the only person in the office of all the 50, 60 patients that were there, the 10 doctors. Nobody wore masks, none of the nurses. I was the only person the whole hour I was there that had a mask on. And that's, you know, a doctor's office should require masks, okay? Because obviously, people are there because they're ill, if not from COVID, from several other diseases right but you know i slept with marjorie that night i kiss her good night every night you know nice big wet one and, <laughs> and and she didn't get it she did not get it thank god you explain know. how the doorman got it how did the, the, the doorman <laughs> didn't you guys have it at the same time the other time y'all had it a year ago, yeah, I had it really bad. I you hardly had, had it. I, I just tested positive. I didn't have any symptoms. Here, I have real symptoms. I mean, yeah, did, okay. did the medicine leave that awful taste in your mouth? You know, it does, but it's not that bad. When I took it, it was 
it was it. awful the taste but it was awful for it me was, too but yeah. our friend the doctor said that because he had it so light the year before he still had a lot of that crap in his body mm -hmm. so his his um resistance was very low oh yeah yeah but anyway so i uh um you know so i came down with it and i have no idea how i got it i you know uh, we went to a restaurant. That was one thing we did, right? And that was about it. Maybe the waiter had it. Could be. Yeah. Could have been somebody just walking by. All I'm table. saying is, is that Marjorie, it's not like Marjorie doesn't live with me and I'm not with her at all times. And if this thing were as, as uh, catching as it once was, she would have gotten it. But I think that maybe the, the intensity of the COVID is not what it once was. Either that or I've been so inoculated. I mean, I just had my most recent shot, the sixth shot, that maybe that weakens it, you know, or whatever. I have no idea, but Marjorie didn't get it, thank goodness. Although thank I, wish, I wish she had gotten it because she treated me like a leper. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, so. I had to stay in the in the guest room. So I felt like I was in a cell. Okay. And I came out of it and she goes, go, don't get near me. Go, you know, and she, she's like, you know, and I'm wearing a mask. And I'm wearing, wearing a mask. mask and she still doesn't want to get near me. And, and so I wish she would get it just so I'd have my friend back, you know. But uh, and, and then when it was five days in the period of past, she still said, do you think maybe you should spend another night in the guest room? <laughs> she's like having that bed to herself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, she said she missed me. I Aww. did. Huh? You really? You really did. Okay. We called each other up and said, what are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the shows we watch together usually together. We just watch separately in different rooms, you know. And uh um, you know, so anyway, uh oh, hello to our friend out there in uh in Canada. How you doing? Hey everybody, I'm good. It's good to be back. It's good to see you healthy, Alex. Well, it's, it's uh, do I look healthy? You do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, uh yeah, thank you. It's good to be healthy again, you know. I mean, and I it was a couple of days of recovery because after it was over, I was just weak. I had a little COVID. Yeah. What do they call it? Uh I felt I was gonna get long haul. But I didn't. But who knows? That may that may come next, you know. So, but anyway, so I, I, you know, I, I'm the one that I'm glad I got COVID now, as opposed to back in the early days of it, because then it could, oh, have, yeah. could have been dreadful. Just dreadful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So uh, anyway, um, you know what's happening on TV? All these shows are coming to an end. You know, so we've been stuck watching the last episode of Mrs. Maisel and the last episode of Citadel and the last Barry. episode of Barry, the last episode of uh, of uh, Succession. And did any of you watch any of these? Just Mrs. Mrs. Maisel. I, Mrs. Maisel, I thought that the, the last episode was really good. I enjoyed yeah. it. it was brilliant. The, the sad thing is all four years weren't brilliant. Yeah. Well, then the first year was pretty. You, yeah, but the year he went, the father went to Europe made no sense. Yeah, well, maybe it's be, no made sense because I think the people who produced the show wanted a vacation. Yeah, you know, really, I often suspect that when they say, "Oh, we're going to Europe," and they go to Europe and they wave from like the Eiffel Tower, and then they come back to the United States, and I'm going, the producer wanted a vacation. You know, bought and paid for with the best hotels, so. Um, but I felt that uh, Mrs. Maisel this year, there were two good episodes. The one where the Friars Club is doing a roast of, uh, of Susie or whatever her name was, the character, the manager. And, and then the last episode, which the I thought was episode. very good. <laughs> Anybody here watch Barry? That was really good. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, talk about satisfying endings. You know, uh, what what uh, streaming is that on? That's on uh, that's HBO. been on, on HBO. HBO, and, and oh, okay. basically the series has been a good series every season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill Hader just was magnificent, and this year he directed every episode. 
Uh, and the last episode is, it's called, the episode's called Wow. And it's, it, you don't know how it's going to end. I mean, it can end so many different ways. And it ended in the best of all possible ways. I mean, it's not positive, but it's, it's, it's uh, very satisfying as a yeah. television episode. You need something new to watch. Have you watched... What have you watched on HBO? The the following of the guys on that podcast, Smartless, uh, oh. was his name Jason Bateman, and and it's really really funny. Really, yeah. I, I wasn't going to watch it, and I thought oh, I'll watch a few minutes of it, and it was just really fun to watch from beginning to end. I thought it was going to be dumb. You know, Pat and and uh, what's yeah. his name, Sean Hayes. Will Arnett is he in that? Yeah, Will Arnett, yeah. Jason Bateman, and uh, Sean Hayes, the guy that played Jack on Will and Grace. Oh, take a look the three at of them are touring, and it's just really funny. The podcast it's, is really good. I didn't know there was a companion show. HBO. Mm. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was fun, you know. Uh, but, but then another show we've gotten to really like, and if you haven't seen it, it's on uh, Apple TV. Yes, we've got all the streaming services. <laughs> um, is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Silo. Anybody seen Silo? It, no, it, but I just got Apple TV so I could watch the Michael Fox, J. Fox documentary. Oh, what a great documentary. Very good, very good. But so you, now there's a show on there called what? Silo. What it is, it's okay. about somewhere in the future, who knows when, okay? There, all these, all the, this group of people, human beings, live in a silo that's, uh, what, 145 stories high? Because the rest of the earth is polluted and poison, the air is bad. Oh, imagine that. But it's been, <laughs> it's been that way for like, this thing is about 1,500 years old. And so all these people live in this silo. And they, if they want to go from the bottom to the top, they have to walk up all the steps. Oh, I kept wow. saying to Marjorie, wouldn't you think if somebody could build this silo and all the technology in this silo, they could come up with an idea for an elevator, <laughs> you know? And they explained it in the last episode why there's no elevator. Yeah. But it you think of it as it's going to be boring. All oh, these people all living in this silo. And, and, and it isn't. It's just, it's it, to begin with, it's a science fiction show. It's a mystery. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a murder mystery. And it's really good. And I, I we're, we're surprised how much we like it. You know, we look one of those things you look, we look forward to. What are you going for there, Randy? What what what's you going for? You you you're picking into something, Mandy. Me? Oh oh oh, oh is this going? Just rip the top off the damn thing. Well, I'm trying to keep it like nice and like openable, like <laughs> well, open, open, openable. Do you like gummy bears? Because these are like. Albanese or whatever. I love them, but at my age, I take the uh, uh, the probiotic gummy bears. I love gummy oh, okay. bears. <laughs> yeah, in BC, like... we take the pot gummy bears. You take uh, what? Pot, <laughs> pot, pot gummy, gummy, gummy bears? bears are great. I can't do yeah. the I can't do the ingestibles. I don't like how much they. Yeah, you know, I, I just find I can't control how high I'm going to get. You know, I know with pot, if I do half. It, huh? I do half. Okay, but head off. but still, how do you know that the half you, it, it, that gummy bear that you buy half is okay for you? you right? You tried it before, Alex. You figured yeah. out what it yeah. takes. Yeah. yeah, but in the meantime, you get loaded horribly. You know, yeah. I mean, and I think horribly loaded. Well, uh, to tell them about the time yeah. you you got like chocolate. A friend sent me a square of a, a it, square of chocolate. Well, a square with the it wasn't you know, that big. It was about big. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was square. I ate the whole thing. I didn't know. Um, <laughs> on the back of it were all these lines. Yeah. I just yeah. thought it was part of the design. And our <laughs> friend called me. And I told them I ate the whole thing. I was stoned for two, three days. Mm -hmm. I figured I'm not going to talk to anyone. I'm just going to watch television and sleep. And it lasted two or three days. I couldn't talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you had, you had so but at least yeah, you're, 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 you didn't try those uh, CDB suppositories, did you? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we've been, joined, we've been joined by John, Don Giller. <laughs> and if I mention that Don <laughs> has a paranoia about COVID. 
So uh, you, is, is that your hazmat outfit? <clears throat> I, I write on Truth so Social that uh, Facebook spreads COVID. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Don? Let me take this. Yeah, this this stuff. This is awful. It, it, oh, that! Oh, up. I wouldn't wear that. Did we wear? No, we didn't wear glasses, did we? We wore a mask and uh, we wore gloves the fir first couple of months that we, you know, COVID was. Awesome. We had you gloves did it for months. Yeah. Huh? You did it for a couple of months. Well, the more gloves? than. That. I was all whenever we went out, we took the gloves. We had a package, any packages that came sat in our foyer. We sprayed and we, it. And we sprayed we it, it with for a couple of days before we even opened it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now in retrospect, the question is, you know, in retrospect, where are we being too cautious? And the answer we is didn't know, probably, Alex. Probably at the time, no, because I think that strain of COVID was much more virulent than any that came after it. So, you know, we were, and look, I bet Don was that way. Don's very used to this day. You, when you go out, you wear a mask, right, Don? Wear gloves. Oh, you still really? wear gloves. <laughs> you, boy, they. I've gotten around uh, 400 booster shots, but I'm, 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 I'm behaving it though. <laughs> I've, I've never. <laughs> 400 boosters. And it, ha it hasn't aff 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 affected me at all. At all. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it true you're only 21 years old? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I oh, wish. boy. Yeah, it hasn't amazing. aged you at all. <laughs> but Marjorie, but we're getting back to Marjorie, she did, she did all that pot. She did the whole thing of chocolates. Well, see, the, the, the thing is that she uh, she knew how to handle herself. She's an experienced. Oh, she uh, didn't handle it well. She was out of it for about, about two days. But she I knew what to do. do. And she I knew just what to... watched television. Right, she knew what to do. You didn't yeah, have it, she right? Did great. I, could, I could never get that high. It would it just <laughs> annoy me. I'd annoy her just if I were that high, you know. Sounds everything in Georgia there. We always like, like to ask Mandy because we feel like she's living in an you know in a uh, like, like if she were in Russia, I'd ask her the same question. <laughs> yeah. uh, I went camping this weekend, but I went to like Western, like just right over the line of Georgia, South Carolina. So like mm -hmm. I was in South Carolina, but only just a couple hours away. And it was raining and like 55 degrees. Uh, and it was like 75 and beautiful here. So, so and you probably said, why the hell did I leave? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it was fine. So you're the camping sort, eh? This is my first camping trip. <laughs> like, of oh well, this went well for you, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't go in a tent. Like we have one of those little mini campers. It's like really tiny. All it holds is basically a bed. Yeah. Well, in the more rewards of my friend Will Durst, I never, I never go anywhere where there's no cable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we would have to go to like the main office, and they had this. It was like one of the older parks in South Carolina, State Park. And like at the office had like a big front, like a big porch that overlooked the lake. It had checkers, you know, and, and but that's where Wi-Fi was. So we would make our like two times a day, let's go get Wi-Fi <laughs> and like load everything. I load some TV. So this is a real old old state park, right? Yeah, it's a state park, but I mean like the service they, they still there. still don't allow black people in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> now that you think about it, I did not see one black. <laughs> I mean, I'm just now thinking that. Like, dang. Really I think hard. black people a long time ago learned that camping is not a good idea. No. You know, no. you know. <laughs> what is it? Uh, let me ask you this, Charlie, because uh, I I always heard this. It was always kind of a myth that black people didn't like to swim. Oh no, I love swim. I know you. You probably love swimming. You know, yeah. although nobody gonna... wants nobody wants to look at your feet. <laughs> no, I can't do it in a pool here because they'll scare the kids. Yeah. Go, Alex, go go back to segregation times. There there were no pools for for black people to learn how to swim. Really? Yeah. yeah. It, it, that's yeah. the that's why that the, it's a racist thing from from the past that blacks didn't mm -hmm. have access to swimming pools. If 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 blacks were in the neighborhood, they shut the pool down. Yep. So that they couldn't swim and they never learned how. It has nothing to do with whether they like or don't like. I didn't. I didn't think about that, but you're probably uh, probably right. Yeah. So, 
you know. Uh, Another wonderful, beautiful part of our history. Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't like camping because bears hate us. <laughs> I watched, we watched Ken Burns's six hour plus documentary on the U.S. and the Holocaust. What a happy show that is. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Oh we walked God. away so depressed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh. I mean, it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, it just made me realize that they don't want us anywhere. Anyway, uh, did anybody watch that? The yeah. Is it on PBS? You, oh, you did, Paula. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that, that uh, I mean, I, you know, you think you know the history. Mm hmm. I, I think we all owe Ken Burns. I, well, it was more all of the more, work that he he has done. It was more right. involved with the history of the Holocaust, the U.S.'s relationship to it, and what they did about it, which was jack shit. <laughs> you know? uh, and um, the thing that, though that I found interesting is that they mention all the different countries that either helped or didn't help, or you know, Britain wasn't admitting that many Jews and, and so forth. And, um, you know, go to the basement, go to Palestine. You know, that was pretty much their attitude. Uh, but uh, what, what amazed me is they didn't bring up Spain because Franco took a million Jews. Billion. Because Hitler, before he started the concentration camps, uh, said, listen, I will send Jews to any country that wants to take them. And... Um, Oh, maybe they needed somebody to run their banks because Spain didn't have a great a, a great history in 1492. You know. Well, well, no, of course, but you're talking about the yeah. You know, you're I'm talking, talking about, about you know, like and and if you go back in history, hey, the Inquisition they got a little cranky, yeah. you know. <laughs> Paid for a great Mel Brooks musical. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> this is true. This is true. But no, but the thing is that uh, 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 he took in. A million Jews. He told them, "Listen, you come here. You're welcome to get here, and but you're not welcome to stay because we can't afford to keep you here. You know, taking on a million people into the economy is not is going to put a big pressure on us. So, really, use this as a point to go somewhere else. And so, a lot of people left the left Spain and then traveled to like Cuba, got citizenship in Cuba, and then came here." Uh, but he took up to a million Jew, Jews, and nobody could figure out why. I mean, he was a fascist if there ever was a fascist. And yet he had a certain fondness for the Jews. And when Hitler, his pal, said, well, you want some? Yeah, sure, here, have some. He took them. And there was nothing in this documentary about Spain and the Jews. No. Nothing. And, and I think, he, you know, Franco was an asshole, and he was one of the worst dictators of all time. But he did have one good thing, and this was it, you know. So one of the things that was that that, that struck me was that uh, in the State Department, I always knew that that there was something with the State Department of anti-Semitism that that, yeah. that some somebody would uh, was um, vetoing the, the the refugees coming into America. But I didn't uh, that that from that show what what the, it showed in, in in the show was that there were just a, a couple of people at the top. Mm -hmm. And they were they were responsible for a lot of people not being let into the country and, and as a result being annihilated. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 but you see, I mean, there's a lot of anti-Semitism in this country to begin with. And so this it's getting just, worse. You know, this it's made getting it worse. This just made it come out, you know, made it rise to the surface. And um uh it was uh but, it, but you know the amount uh, people didn't they didn't want jews here they didn't want uh they didn't want chinese here they had the chinese early on they had the chinese exclusionary act and then look what they did to the japanese yeah 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 and we like to think of ourselves as this wonderful country that opens its arms to everybody we'll you know. start with the american indian oh yeah. well yeah you know but they're not called American Indians anymore. They're called Native Americans, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, those or are the, those, those, no, those are the Indian Indians that wear the saris. <laughs> oh. oh boy! I, I, I come on, give me some credit for that one, okay? <laughs> you know. Anyway, so um, uh, what else uh, um, is?
is going on. How about can, what's happening up in Canada, Mike? Oh, you know, um, I'm actually getting ready for my trip to come down to New York. I'm coming. I'm coming to see you guys on. Uh, I do take the red eye on Wednesday night. You're oh. actually going to take the train, huh? Oh no, a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, flying all night. I arrive uh, boots on the ground in New York City at 9.30 a.m. on Thursday. On Thursday? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this thing starts at, what, 10 on, on Saturday? Yeah. It's 10 o'clock. And, and I think I'm going to be picketing with some uh, former Letterman writers on Friday. So that'll be fun. Oh. Well, yeah. Good, well, good yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an aft sag after him. We're always invited to go to the picket lines, but, you know. Um, my union sag after is going to be thinking about uh going on strike um but it's always the trouble with my union is it's sag after and they they don't think much of after they really don't and so the fran drescher who is the yes fran drescher is the president of our union oh. <laughs> uh, and, uh, she's actually a very smart woman well, she's a very smart woman, but that doesn't matter. She's stupid enough to not give us uh, health insurance. Yeah. Well, she took away the health insurance. Yeah. She Wasn't was... there a hundred-year-old actor that lost his health insurance? Oh, 104, yeah. uh, 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 Norman Lloyd, 105, yeah. 106, something like Norman that. Norman Lloyd, really? Yeah, Norman yeah. Lloyd, Olivia de Havilland, who died at 103, didn't yeah. her insurance was pulled from her. Yep. You know? So, you know, I, all these all these great old actors. But the thing is, it's always actors. So I get this thing from Fran Drescher. I mean, even in a day, I get these, these robocalls from Fran Drescher. There's nothing worse than getting a robocall with that voice. Yeah. You know? and, Wait, is it and, the same voice? The voice hmm? wasn't, like, exaggerated in the show? It's, no, it's voice? not exaggerated. That's her voice. Oh, wow. Yeah, for the most part. 99. Right. I thought they were using that Ed Berger guy to do the calls. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so and to, uh, um, we're having, you know, we're, we need your, we're having a vote now on, on whether we, we want it. We will, we can go on strike. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to, that we can. And then I, then I get a letter from Fran Drescher. And then I get, what else did I get? I think I got a lovely tote bag from Fran Drescher. I can't remember now. <laughs> All asking us to vote against, uh-huh. them, but they're always saying because we need to save our acting jobs. And I'm going, what are you doing for AFTRA? <laughs> you know, there are people out there who are not making a penny anymore because you guys have not negotiated new contracts. And and so I, I'm I'm a little uh, so yes, I feel sorry for the Writers Guild, and I hope that uh, they get their pens back or whatever they're striking for. And you know. That's wonderful. And I'd probably be out there striking for him, too, if I wasn't 83 years old and uh, just got over COVID. So, you know, that's my excuse. You have a good reason. Huh? But what are you doing it for? You're not a writer, Chisholm. No, no, no. I'm going to go and support the boys and and girls out there. Absolutely. Oh, okay. All right. Do you know what they're striking about? Did you read any of the stuff? I did. Well, yeah, because we've had a, a bunch of former Letterman writers on recently who have talked about it. We just had Craig Thomas on who uh, it hasn't gone up yet, who wrote for Letterman and then helped create how I met your mother. And he talked a lot about it. He, uh, we, we, the idea of streaming rights and AI um, are, are the two big issues. And, and he did a really good job of talking about the benefit of having a writer throughout the entire process and what's happening now are they're truncating it. They're bringing in writers for little teeny tiny parts of the process. And it's making it really hard for people to get into writing people who are, you know, in the, in their teenage years who want to be a writer. uh, So those opportunities are going away because of where the industry is going. And so part of the strike is trying to ensure uh, that writers can get into this thing. And it's not just a side hustle or a side gig for people. Yeah, but what they're fighting for too is is the old the old school. In other words, the way things have been done all along, rather than trying to deal with the way things are going to be. I mean, I, I right now I think this whole thing about AI is a lot of crap from the, from the news channels who like to have a story. Ooh, AI! Finally, the Farben Project is going to attack us. You know, I mean, uh, all, all of that kind of thing that we learn from science fiction. 
about uh, computers and computers taking over. The mm, I'm not so sure. About that me, one. Me, me neither. Have you tried the chat GPT thing, Alex? Yes, I have. Have you written into it? Uh, write me an article about and just give it a topic. Yeah. It's it's pretty incredible how pretty, you just go, people pretty, do that and pretty, just go back and make little edits and they call it their own. Pretty incredible yeah. that I was born in 1960. <laughs> many years <laughs> off my age. Uh, I found that uh, when I used it, it was not scarily accurate. All right. It was uh, amazingly inaccurate, actually. That's because it's early days. Well, yeah. yes, but, but, but you know, right. let, let's be honest about it. Everything we invent finally winds up being used for bad stuff. You know, I mean, it, I was a big, a big guy for computers. Computers were just, you know, you know how I was, Marjorie, right? I didn't know you then. <laughs> yes, you oh, did. I did. Yeah. Before the birth of computers. Well, I mean, Len LaFresca will attest to the fact that I used to have, the, I was the first guy to use a computer in a control room. You and I talked about the video toaster back in the 80s in your studio. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, I was always into technology and I, and the promise of it, you know, hey, all the wonderful things that will happen with this technology. And I even realized that the technology was invented by the human race, but then it was also used by the human race. That's the problem. And the problem is they use it for no good. I mean, if you want to, you want, you want to say something bad that AI does? Try robocalls, <laughs> all AI, you know, uh, and, and and you can go on and on about how bad computers have been used and applied. Look at the internet. Look at the internet. I mean, even in the very beginning, and we were talking about it earlier, in the very beginning, uh, you had IBM as the first company, I think, that had computers, right? And who did they sell them to? Hitler. Hitler, yeah. <laughs> And Hitler used them to keep tabs on the Jews. Every time a Jew would come into a concentration camp, they you know, they had punch cards in those days. they make up a punch card on one, somebody. So they literally had punch cards on everybody they put in those in those ovens. You know, so the first thing that computers were being used for, and by the way, IBM had no compunction about selling all these computer cards to Hitler. So the yeah. money. Huh? Yeah. Who wanted the money? Money talks and nobody walks. And uh, considering that, well, hold on. Here comes uh, Albert, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, oh. Albert. He's down in Florida. You're lucky. You know, you finally found a way to get your governor out of town. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Is yeah. he out of town? Uh, yeah, of course. He's, he's, he's now running for president. Oh, oh, that. That thing, yeah. yeah. By the that way, part I know. Black governor. I don't know how much you you watched him. What is that noise? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's is it gone. coming from my end? No. Oh no, it was there. Before. No, it was gone. It's gone now. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, Boy, it was something about, about you know, Santa's. Santa's, yeah. Santa's, and then I had something I was I forgot. Oh, yeah. President. It, 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 answer me this, because you do. You have seen DeSantis. You know he's your governor down there. I see as little of him as I possibly but can. When you do, where, did he, where did he get a charisma bypass? I mean, he has no personal charm or warmth. That doesn't stop people from becoming president. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, at least. At least you know you had Trump, who was a cartoon character. This mm -hmm. guy just had no character at all. Well, because part of it is because he's like good looking. Is he? I mean, I, I don't like say normal it. standard. Wait I mean, a minute, Mandy finds DeSantis good looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mandy! Jesus. Is it the pudding oh, fingers? Yeah. I'm saying aesthetically, it doesn't mean I'm thinking. What are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, I think he's got traditional good looks. Yeah. You mean like Georgia like me? <laughs> he's not an yeah. ogre. Let's put it that way. Right. I said he's not like ugly, me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He and his wife to... got married at Disneyland, by the way. Did he and his wife get married at Disney? Really? Yeah. Wow. And now he hates Disney. I think he's oh, having, well, they're, they're, having they're having second thoughts about that now. 
Who, Disney or DeSantis? Oh, DeSantis. Oh, yeah, there he is. There's a DeSantis with those wonderful I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like when he was younger, when he was up and coming. To be a politician, he had traditional good looks. I'm sure that helped him offset the. the he doesn't the, have he doesn't have the traditional politician bad looks. Let's put it that way. Right, that's what I'm saying. Most most, most politicians are trolls. Maybe okay, right. Maddie, was he the male version of Sarah Palin? <laughs> <laughs> I no, I mean I don't even I didn't I mean, even get the whole Sarah Palin thing. But I'll, I'll have to agree. admit. That Sarah Palin was very attractive. Yeah, she's a yeah. good-looking woman. Yeah, she's a very she's handsome great. woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if he, say, so. he doesn't necessarily have to be so like charming because, like, I don't think Bill Clinton is good-looking. Like, well, I, I I couldn't tell you on that one. I mean, I oh, was Marjorie charming. Bill Clinton but attractive. Bill Clinton is good-looking. He wasn't my type, but he was good-looking. And he was charismatic. Well, was he was, oh, oh, he was charismatic. That's what I'm saying. Ron DeSantis has more like to me traditional all American good looks to offset the fact that he's not very charismatic. Well, that's it. That. He doesn't have that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. He's not a troll. He's not ugly. Right. You know, but that's all he has going for him. He's not ugly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good campaign slogan to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in California, you got what's his name, uh, the governor, Gavin Newsom. Gavin, Gavin Newsom. Newsom. He's a really, he's a good looking guy. Gavin said he was going to wait four more years. He said that for okay. sure. Okay, all right. You know, um, how is old is Newsom? Company that's not insuring how, California how old is anymore. His fifties, I think. Huh? Is he in his he's 50s? got plenty of time then. Yeah, he's got yeah. plenty of time. I thought he was in his late forties. Who? Newsom. Well, wait, hold on a second. We'll ask the oh. oracle. Echo, no, how old is Gavin Newsom? 55. 55. 50, 50, 50, wait a minute. Uh, he's 55. 55. Yeah. Born in 67. Yeah. So he's 55 years old. Yeah. Yeah. DeSantis is only 44. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. He's from well, you know, I it would be uh, nice to see some. Man. It would be nice to see some younger guys. And still, still eating his pudding with his fingers. Is that okay? I'm an old guy, and I should say, well, it's uh, are you going to be old and be president? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. if, if, even if I knew how to be president, you know, I, I don't have the strength to give a full day on that job. I, I don't know how Biden does it. I think many naps is what my theory is. Many it's naps. a matter. He's gotten a lot of stuff done. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Period. If you say so. Yeah. Alex, come on. How about your guy up in Canada? What's his name, uh, Trudeau? I'm expecting the uh, the riots any day now. Really? Yeah, just, right. uh, Justin Trudeau is not a very popular man up here in many circles. You know something, though? It, do Canadians riot? <laughs> well the ones who drive semi-trucks seem to i mean i would imagine if they did something like throw a rock they would then say how sorry they were they did it <laughs> and apologize to the the person they threw it at or something you know they splash each other with maple syrup yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we do that for fun mike why isn't he liked um there is a, a, a huge battle going on up here right now in regards to free speech and um and 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 governed sanctioned speech and things like that and so uh and then not just that there is a lot of his particular government has a lot of things that go on behind the scenes more so than what we're used to he kind of ignores public inquiry and many are extremely frustrated with how he handled um the pandemic mm -hmm. so that's a few few things how did he handle the pandemic that was yeah. particularly what bad did um, mandates and things like that, uh, vaccine passports. Um, that's a very hot issue. Uh, we were one of the, I, I don't know if we were one of the only countries to have vaccine passports, but, uh, it was scarily efficient how they were mandated and put into play. A lot of people up here don't like that. Um, was it, was it effective? Was it, I think that's in the eye of the beholder. 
You know, what exactly is a, a vaccine passport and what does it do? So you had to uh, basically when you got your vaccine that you 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 had it registered with your local health authority and like, then it got loaded uploaded into like a national database and then there were uh, rights that were or weren't there for people who had the vaccine passport going to eat at restaurants travel etc. Hmm. Okay. Right. Well, you know, I mean, I, I it, it's it's funny. It, you go back and you look at the way a lot of uh, different politicians and so on handled COVID. And, you know, maybe in uh, 10 years from now, we'll look back at it and say, well, that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, but we didn't know anything back then. We were looking. We didn't have any solutions. We didn't have vaccinations. You know, so, I mean, don't wear one mask, wear two masks. I mean, people are, you know. We're saying everything. And who 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 was to question that? If they were being just very careful about everything. We do have rules about vaccinations for children uh, before they go to school. Yes. yes. Everybody accepts that. Yes, but well, if not that, everybody, but, but you if, know, if they wanted to give that kid a, a COVID vaccination, they would yell and scream. Yes. And yet they have to get every other vaccination known to mankind before they can go to school. And that's just so they don't get the other kids sick. You know, I mean, if you don't care about your own health, you do should care about the health of other people. But anyway, I think part of the outcry up there is that the COVID uh, shot was very different than the measles shot in many, many, many ways. Um, you know, the true vaccination versus the it, not, it, how it much was, time the measles a, one has been around a, versus how quickly the COVID one showed up. From a scientific standpoint, it wasn't really a traditional vaccination. Yes, traditional exactly. vaccinations, you infected the person with a little bit of the disease, and that made them immune. This thing worked on an entirely different uh, process. Uh, let's go to the scientist, Charlie Wallace, who has his hand. Uh, I just want to point out, if you said how effective it was, is in the eye of the beholder. Canada has about one-tenth the population of the United States. That would mean that they would have to have had over 100,000 deaths because we've had over a million. There have only been 50,000 deaths from COVID in Canada. Okay, there you go. So I think he was very effective. Yeah. Also, we've had over 100 million cases, and Canada's only had 4 million. Wow. 4 million cases. Wow. That's about 10% so of the country. I think he's done, he's done a hell of a job. I wish I lived in Canada. <laughs> Plus, you have <laughs> universal health care. Yes. Maybe you can well, freeze. Maybe that can... part was there before Justin showed up. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> well, how, long's he, how long's he been prime minister? It seems like he's been prime minister for. I mean, I realize his father was prime minister at one point. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But yeah, the, Pierre was around for a long time. I think Justin's been around for eight years. Something. Is that like really? That. I thought it was longer than that. Uh, might be. I might be wrong. Echo. Do they have, have limits. They have limits? Do they have limits? No, because we have a parliamentary system. Yeah. Uh, it's the leader of the party who is the prime minister, right? So you uh -huh. vote for your local MP, your member of parliament, and the party that has the most uh, wins, their leader is the prime minister. Oh, okay. So if we added the parliamentary system here. Everybody would vote for their local leader, and they would go to Washington and then decide who the president was going to be. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Wonder if that would work for us. What 2013? Huh? 2013. Oh, so 10 years then. 2013. 10 years. When when he when he became the leader of the Liberal Party. Right. So therefore he became the prime minister. And, and his father was prime minister, and his mother, what, cheated on the on the prime minister? She had a thing for Fidel Castro. Was that it? Yeah. You're right. Was is that true? No. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess it depends who you ask. <laughs> she wishes. <laughs> so the only thing I can ask Albert, because he's down there in Florida, is how's everything at the swimming pool? What does that mean? But that means that that's as exciting as your life gets in Florida. How oh, yeah. I don't even go to the swimming pool anymore. That's how boring my life is. Really? Go to the gym. I come home and that's it. Wait a minute. You got a swimming pool there and you don't use it? I, I haven't been to the pool in a while. Wow. I just, I just don't feel, you know, you do something often 
and you start to take it for granted and you you get used to it you know how it is you've cheated on your wives before you know well <laughs> <laughs> uh, we won't get into that one okay. it's a sore subject for marjorie not that i ever cheated on her oh. but the cheese resents the fact that i cheated on my other wives so you know what is that noise now there's that noise now yeah what what is that oh i hear it Sounds well, like it, a printer, it, an inkjet printer. I think on. it's some noise. Is you have some noise going on there? Um, uh, Blame somebody. Mandy, Mandy, do you have <laughs> any noise in there? I mean, no. The only thing I have on my, I just have my little fan going on my computer. No, that can't be it. No, it's, no but my it comes and goes. Something off and and. Then we stopped hearing it. I just looked to see which which uh, uh, square is lit up, and you were talking. It, it, sound, it sounded a little bit Darth Vader, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the IRS. Yeah, I think it was maybe in her her computer or in something there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, so hold on a second. I've got a, my very 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 first and probably only ever correction of Don Giller. Trudeau got elected as the Liberal Party leader in 13, but he actually became Prime Minister in 2015. So it's been eight years. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All That's right. the only time that'll ever happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. It does seem like it's been longer than that, though. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you know, I've been here for... And don't let it happen again. I've been here for 52 <laughs> minutes already, and nobody has thanked me for my service. Thank you for your cervix. What? Thank you for your cervix. What? <laughs> I say that to Marjorie all the time. It's well, it's what it's more. Who, who you're servicing is none of our business. Do, do we thank people for having served in the military on Memorial oh, Day, or is that better? They're day? dead. Huh? Every day, for those who Every passed day. away. Yeah. Well, for those who pass away, and you know what, uh, you know what it was when it was created, and why? The Civil War. That's correct. That's wow. Right. The weird voice yeah. gets the point. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are all these people that complain about, you know, air bases being named after Civil War heroes <laughs> in, on the South, and they don't complain about the Civil War dead? being the reason Memorial Day was created. Dead, I imagine, on both sides. I don't think it was just one side. No, well, there was a Confederate Memorial Day. That the is state of is it really? really? There yeah. was, that actually used to be recognized in the state of Georgia as a holiday, because my mom worked for the state of Georgia. It still so is in Texas, January 19th. Yeah, it was in January. So when Martin Luther King Day was you know, ratified, or whatever you call it, for federal holiday, Georgia switched it out and gave the state employees Martin Luther King Jr.'s Day instead of Confederate Memorial Day. But the, you know that's how, was, that's how yeah. we got robbed. Okay, nobody paid attention to this big thievery that happened, and that thievery <laughs> was they decided they wanted to do a Martin Luther King holiday. So what did they do? Did they say, "Oh, good, you're going to have another day off"? Yeah, no, they, uh -uh. they took the two so they were in January. They took the two presidents. And combined yeah. into one day called President's Day, and then yeah. took that one of those days and made that yeah. Martin Luther King's birthday. You yeah, know? we used to we used to get both February twelfth and February twenty second off. Yes. And oh, we'll, you did. Okay, I, yeah. I guess I don't remember a President's Day. Now in Texas, day. isn't there some holiday you don't um, you don't celebrate Texas? There, uh, um, I can't remember now. Oh, the, the Confederate Heroes Day is, is celebrated along with Martin Luther King. And they're still they're doing it? They're still, they're still doing it in Texas? They're still doing it in Texas. Didn't yes. they get the memo? Nope. Texas Jeez. doesn't care about memos. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And also, I, I have a pet peeve. People saying, Happy Memorial Day. <laughs> yeah, how do you be happy yeah, about Memorial Happy Memorial Day. Day. <laughs> It's like, do you really understand and that? And like, I would see people on Facebook today are like, you know, thank you for your service. And it's just kind of like, no, that that's Veterans Day. Well, I wish we had somebody here that was British because here it's Merry Christmas, right? Yeah. And yeah. in England, it's Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, yeah. 
Why? Mm-hmm. You know, I'd rather be happy than married. I guess. I guess. The uh, fog. Yeah. By the way, I heard a great poem the other day. Roses are uh, roses are gray, violets are gray, and I'm a dog. <laughs> 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 where, where did I hear that? Something on one of the shows on uh oh who was that guy that died, the comedian who died uh um oh god just recently and Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. Norm, uh, yeah, yeah, Norm, yeah. Norm, Norm McDonald told that joke and I just went, that's great. That yeah. sounds right. <laughs> I, I love that one. That's terrific. But uh anyway, so let's say he it, it, Albert doesn't go to the pool anymore. So what 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 do you do? What's your average day in Florida? It sounds to me you like you get a restaurant. Oh yeah, I go to re- yeah, I, I do the other stuff, but you know, I, I'm I'm on the computer. Look, once I get into um into Google and in, into uh Wikipedia, I can't get out. Yeah, you know, I look for one thing. Like today I, I Googled Wamsgans, which is uh one of the characters in succession after watching the finale last night and I couldn't get out of Google. I couldn't get out of Wikipedia. I, it, it happens all the time. I just go to one link, then the next link, and I'll have six, t- seven tabs open from the first tab to the, to the last really, one. My, so, my, my, my problem is YouTube. I have that problem too. Oh man. Yeah, YouTube that's another like, one. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like eating. Um, uh, what are the things you eat that you can't stop your popcorn? Like yeah. popcorn. Yeah. It's, and it, it's it, you it, once you have super glue on YouTube and how to use it in different, you, I can't get away from that. I don't know why. So There's Albert, a, is it, is it true that you're actually Q? Q? Put all that time on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it were. <laughs> it, uh, it, but it, it, you know these are amazingly addictive and marjorie's addicted to, to insta in, what is it uh instagram instagram elephants dogs cats and astronomy <laughs> that's your those are your favorites yeah and bookmarks but i think tiktok has the cuter kitties i just really believe so <laughs> you know and the, and the more expensive kitties they're all bengals or uh what was the one that uh, my ex girlfriend had? A um, forget the name of it now. Big, huge cats, giant cats. Maine Coons. Maine Coons. No, no, no. This is um, oh, like a ser- serval. Is no, it? serval, serval. She had a serval. I woke up one morning with this thing on my chest, looking down at me, and I thought I was in a jungle in a tent. Oh. You know, I mean, they're huge, just huge. Um. Like a mountain lion, but a sweet animal, sweet animal, just really, yeah, just like a mountain man. I like a, yeah, that. <laughs> I told Marjorie, I said, you know, she loves elephants. Lately, she loves elephants, especially she likes looking at mo- mother elephants and the baby elephants at the same time. Um, uh, and I said, uh, uh, that's adorable, but why don't they invent dwarf elephants so you can have an elephant as a pet in your home? You know. And then you can take it out for a walk on a leash, whatever. I think that's part of their appeal is because huh? they're like a gentle giant. I think so. Yes. Oh, they're, they're wonderful animals. And they're so loving to their children. Well, there I go. with. So my- let's enslave them. That's your answer, right? Let's make the little ones and enslave them. They're so wonderful. <laughs> Has anybody else ever ridden on an elephant? Yes. Have you? Yeah. It's a pretty surreal experience. It's pretty cool. Yeah, what's it like? Uh, uh... Uh, uh, surreal is, yeah, it's scary because it's like the skin is so thick yeah. and you realize how powerful they are as they as they walk. And it's it's it, it feels like it's one of the closest things to a dinosaur you could ever kind of yeah. imagine. They're just really, really powerful and uh, it's humbling. You must break your back though to go on an on a camel. You know that can't be comfortable. Yeah, there's a saddle. Yeah, but it still can't be comfortable. It's not. No, bad. but everybody likes to get humped. Yeah. <laughs> I used to, I used to work for a station called KMEL. In fact, I'm wearing the the shirt for it here. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, and um, uh, they had this big inflatable camel and stuff like that. But occasionally we go out somewhere they actually hire a camel. And they are the nastiest animals in the oh, world. Yeah. 
they just start spitting on you. Yep. And they just, they do not like human beings at all. When you ride on them, they're pissed off. You know? Maybe because when they're you ride, human beings. Human beings are even nastier than camels. <laughs> when you ride yeah. around in the desert in Saudi, they're always on the side of the highway and people stop and get the milk. The people who <laughs> own the camels sell the milk on the side of the highway. Really? Yeah. You milk a camel? Yeah, camel milk is a big deal to the people in those countries. Really? Yeah, so they think it's, it's got some special properties and it's actually illegal to sell, so they do it in the ditch next to the road. And, huh. and uh, so they're down there pulling on the on the uh, camel's tits. I didn't watch the extraction, just saw the sale. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose if you had somebody pulling on your tits all day, you'd be nasty and spit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I just looked at the clock. Guess what? Boy, I love this hour. It's just you just such a wonderful bunch of people. I really enjoy you. We're glad you're back, Alex. Last week yes, sucked without having you here. Well, I miss, I miss being here, but I just I, I was still coming down off of it, and I did not have the strength to do it. Otherwise, I would have done it. I would have done this over anything else. I didn't do the nighttime show for thir- on Wednesday and Thursday because I still felt like crap. But I really felt bad about missing this one <laughs> yeah. uh, because I know you all enjoy it too. Which is wonderful. We do. Thank, thanks to Marjorie Miller, who played the part of my wife today. <laughs> Life with Alex. Um, what's, listen to this. What's for dinner, darling? <laughs> she told me earlier, leftover fettuccine Alfredo from Costco. Boy, you are, getting, you are getting lazy. You are really getting late. <laughs> See you moving your butt, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> and she is one of the best cooks I have ever eaten food from. She is an amazing cook. Oh, yeah, but I think she's forgotten how to do it. I don't it, think so. It's like uh, uh, cooking has become a uh, an atrophied limb to her, you know, because she True. all she does, she orders out the Instacart. And she couldn't order from Instacart today because most of the places are closed. So we're going to have leftover fettuccine Alfredo. Thank you for your cervix, Marjorie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to uh, Andrew Deutsch. Good to see you, Andrew. Nice to have you here. It's a holiday, of course, and it's easier for you to be with yeah. us. Yeah, I got my nice six-hour commute in the morning. Really? Where, where are you working now? In Maryland. Really? Doing what? I, I took over a... Uh, home services company we cover from north pennsylvania border down to virginia beach in norfolk oh wow Ooh, that's cool yeah. that's very cool that's very yeah cool. i got started in january so i i'm there two weeks at a time and then i come home for a few weekends here and there charlie wallace always a pleasure to have you charlie four toes <laughs> uh and uh at paul 11 nice to have her here in spite of the fact that she can't come to visit us. Yeah. Uh, let's thank uh, Len LaFrisco. Thank you, Len. Appreciate it. Mandy, have you got your mic back on? Yes. That noise was you. I don't know what it is. It's always me. I always got the technical problems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I That's some gas treat, X. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to treat you like a leper. I don't want to treat you like a leper because I know what that's like. Marjorie made me one for four, five days last week. <laughs> We'll see you later this week, uh, Mike Chisholm. Can't wait. Can't wait to see you guys in person. Yes. Don Giller. Oh, he's a player. Him too. Don. You just got a nice wit about you, and I like that. And you're a nice guy. <laughs> really, you know. And and finally, uh, uh, it's the lovely and attractive Albert Reynoso. Yay! Thank you for your sermons. <laughs> 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 and finally, we go to our good friend, Edward Berger, who signs off with that immortal phrase. That's all, folks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. Al.